Hi, this is Ed. I hope you all are having a great day today. Today we're going to be doing Philippians chapter 4. And uh, it talks about standing firm in the Lord as well as uh, talking about rejoicing again. Again, the, the theme of this book, if you've been following these videos, is rejoicing. Paul exhorts us to rejoice a number of times in this wonderful epistle that he wrote to the Philippians. So I'm going to be reading today from the ESV, and then I'm going to share some comments I have with you all uh, on this video here, or excuse me, this uh, chapter, chapter 4. So let's get started. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, enjoy and my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. I entreat Eudea, and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness, excuse me, I'm tongue-tied this morning. Let it be known to everyone, the Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger and abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet... I, it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered in a part, partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. What an awesome way to end this letter. Paul gives, gives a blessing of grace to all the readers of this letter. Verses 1 through 4. Stand fast in the Lord. Let us keep standing firm in our faith until the end. Hard times are coming upon the earth, and if the Lord tarries, we will need to persevere in our faith, lest we fall away. Let us seek to preserve unity and peace with our brothers and sisters as much as possible, so that we be of the same mind in Christ. Let us rejoice always. Let us keep rejoicing, even in the midst of adverse circumstances. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit, and it is, it, 
is the result of peace with God. We can rejoice because we have a personal relationship with Christ, and He is Lord over all things. Verses 5 through 7. Let us overlook the faults of others and not point fingers, not scoff at others or, you know, bring discord within the body. And let us work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, as Paul exhorted us to do in chapter 2. For the day of the Lord is at hand. The rapture of the bride of Christ is an imminent event. It could occur at any moment. It could be sometime in the immediate future, very soon, or it could be a little longer off, again, if the Lord tarries, because his timing is not our timing. What we consider to be soon may not be soon on his time schedule, although we do know by the signs of, of everything that's going on that we are definitely in the end of days. And I would venture to say at the last of the end of days, before the great tribulation begins, and before that, the Lord will come for his bride to take his bride to be with him. So again, the day of the Lord is at hand. It could happen at any time. So we want to be found at, at peace with God and with others when that day comes, lest we may be left behind to go through the tribulation period. So let us walk <clears throat> in love with others also and seek peace and pursue it and pursue holiness also as it says in hebrews pursue peace and holiness without which no one shall see the lord do not be anxious or worried but trust in the lord for all things and thank him in advance for answering your prayers god gives peace to those who pray and trust him by faith. Verses 8 and 9. Another key to having peace and joy is to meditate on good things, especially to meditate on God's holy word and scriptures. And also focus on positive thoughts and reject negative thoughts. And if you spend your time you know, a lot of your time watching videos that have a lot of fear mongering in it. And, you know, you're going to be dwelling on that. You're going to have dreams about it. And you may even have nightmares. Uh, you know, what, what we take into our spirit greatly affects us. So, uh, I mean, uh, and I'm not saying don't watch anything about the news at all. We have to keep up with what's going on. And, uh, that is a good thing to do to, to be aware of what's going on. But there is a, a line and only the Lord knows where it is, where, where if, if you go overboard and, and taking in too many of these negative thoughts, these, these negative uh, news reports, then that's all you're going to be thinking about. We should instead be focusing more on the Lord by studying and reading his word, listening to encouraging messages, mess messages, by by true messengers of the Lord, those who teach the gospel without compromise, those who do not twist the scriptures out of context for, for their own liking and, and their, their own uh, satisfaction, if you will. Let us focus on good and positive things, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Verses 10 through 12, let us rejoice in the blessings from the Lord, for he daily loads us with his benefits, as it says in Psalm 68, 19. Let us be content in all circumstances, knowing that the Lord will help us to overcome them all. Verses 13 through 18, we can do all things through Christ, because the Holy Spirit dwells within us, and he is our helper. He will help us to overcome all things and to do all things that, that we are called to do in Christ. 
The kingdom of heaven is inside of us because the Holy Spirit dwells within us. And also let us help others in need when we are able to do so. For the Philippians were the first ones to, to help to Paul in his, in his time of need. You know, whereas the other churches weren't really sending him anything, although they did pray for him. So again, if the Lord puts somebody on your heart and you are able to help them, then, then do so. So also a scripture that says, Give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto you. Verses 19 through 23, God will supply all our needs in Christ. Does not mean he'll supply all of our wants. You know, some of our wants may not even be something that, that are, is good for us. God knows what is best for us, and he will give us what we truly need. Let us be God-centered instead of self-centered. The grace of our Lord be with you all, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his peace and joy. So stay rejoicing always. S stay focused on the Lord. Meditate upon his word and meditate upon good things. And stand fast in the Lord and the power of his might. Endure until the end. And pray always to be accounted as worthy to escape the soon coming tribulation hour and to stand before the Lord and not be ashamed. So God bless you all. I hope you've enjoyed this teaching today. And uh, until next time, keep looking up. Bye-bye.